I'm Brennan McDonough. I am a former Ground Mount hotshot. I worked for the City of Prescott Fire Department for two and a half years. Uh, I started my career in 2011 and it uh, tragically ended in June 30th, 2013 when I lost 19 of my brothers. Okay, I'm here with Ground Mount hotshot. Your escape route has been cut off. We are preparing a deployment site. There's not a day that didn't go by that I didn't relive what happened. I couldn't get away from it in my sleep. Unhealthy habits, you know, started to fill my life. I just drank and drank and drank and drank and drank. I couldn't continue to every day of my life, feel the guilt and shame that I felt for surviving and let it hurt my daughter. And I remember dropping her off about 30 minutes into my drive and I grabbed my gun and I put it to my head and the radio a song came on. And earlier that day, me and my daughter were dancing in the living room to be able to sp spin her around and watch her laugh and giggle. And that's the image God showed me. So I unloaded the gun and threw it in the back seat front. I can't even remember where I put it. And I drove home, but I, I, I still didn't know who to reach out to. I know I needed help. What we have seen throughout the country are the firefighters that are feeling isolated, they're feeling alone, and unfortunately they feel that the only way to stop feeling this is to take themselves out. There came a point in our department where we suffered four suicides in a seven month period of time. And basically we kind of decided, you know, maybe we were taking better care of the community than we were taking care of ourselves. We had a couple of people um, that we I consider like our rocks of our department, like the old crusty salty guy. And when those people started cracking, you realize, wow, okay, like we're definitely not invincible. The job is going to take a toll on you emotionally. Nobody calls 911 on a good day and say, hey, I'm having a nice time. People call when they're in dire need of service, and some of that service is very traumatic and very emotionally draining. At this point, consensus is about 18%. Some samples as high as 22% firefighters have post-traumatic stress disorder. We've always had issues of firefighters with post-traumatic stress. We've had issues of firefighters unfortunately taking their lives committing suicide. That's always been around. We've just never talked about it. The stigma. It's huge. The stigma is that, you know, if I have a mental health issue, that I'm not going to be accepted like everybody else. We train people to be battle-hardened. We push them to their limits mentally and physically to be there, but we don't do a good job to say, hey, after that call, it's okay to say that, like, I'm, I'm struggling. The largest um, risk is, is just the stress load, event upon event upon event. Normal humans don't get to see the things that we do or do the things we do. And you do that over your career path, it adds up. Substance abuse, alcohol, major depression, um, family issues, um, you know, divorce. There are a number of issues that, are, uh, that somebody is faced with. They just see the consequences of not getting an early intervention. Firefighters were quick to get on the physical fitness bandwagon. It's time for fire service to step up and, and put behavioral health right there, front and center. We want to break the stigma. That way we can get our members to come out of the shadows, to raise their hand, to look for help, and to access, access the resources that they need. We had our first behavioral health conference, which brought labor and management together. Never been done before in the fire service in the United States where we've had labor and management come together to focus on behavioral health. The California Fire Service Task Force on Behavioral Health is a team of very passionate individuals from various disciplines in the fire service. President Paulson and Mike Dury brought the task force together to formally address the issues of post-traumatic stress injury and behavioral health injury. Bringing labor management together for behavioral health matters is key. It, it has to happen. And, and just like when our peer support program, we had to have awkward conversations with ourselves, we have to have those conversations with management. CalJAC is the premier training organization in the state of California. Having CalJAC is a natural fit to ensure that we have success in training our members. PTSD is not a life sentence. 
PTSD is something that's real, and we have to make sure that people understand that. But can people go back to work after being diagnosed with PTSD with the proper treatment? Yes. The highs are really high. There's those moments where you make a difference and nobody ever takes that away from you. And that's why we love to do what we do. We also have to recognize that sometimes in that pursuit that there's gonna be a lot of bad days too. But you, ha you have to find that balance and it's okay to say, I need help. We are the eyes and ears of, of, our, of our brothers and sisters. We're, our, we're their keepers. We're supposed to keep them safe on the line, and we should do the same thing at home. We should be willing to fight for that as, as much as we're willing to fight for them in a, in a burning building or a burning forest or any of those kind of situations.